Now I've installed AMG parts on a BMW. We've installed Volvo parts on an Aston Martin. But today, Lamborghini parts are going on the Audi S3. Now it's been a long time since we've had the Audi S3 on the channel and rightly so, Liam has been enjoying it. And it's also been a long time since it looked like this. Now, if you haven't stayed up to date with the S3 build, it's in the top right-hand corner now. But if you didn't know, I bought this crash damage from auction from a friend, Liam. I've since repaired it, modified it, and then he's been using it as his daily driver. Now, despite Liam's driving ability or lack of it, we are actually going to be making the Audi S3 even quicker than what it is now. And this thing isn't slow. So, to the unit. <laughs> From the factory, Audi S3s produce around 300 bhp. But we have already done some modifications to this S3, which could have potentially increased it that little bit more. Now to make a turbo car quicker, there's a few things that we need. The first thing we need is more air going into the turbo, and we've done this by installing a Ram air induction kit. With all that extra air, it needs somewhere to go. And that's where a new downpipe and full exhaust system comes into place. Now with all that extra air going in and coming out of the engine, it's gonna get a lot hotter. And that is where this thing comes into place and it is absolutely ginormous, a new intercooler. I honestly don't know how this thing is gonna fit behind that bumper, but this is now gonna cool all that boosted air coming from the induction kit, through the turbo, through all the boost pipes and then into the intercooler before finally going onto the intake of the engine and that should give us a full recipe of more power, which is exactly what we want. So to access the old intercooler, we need to take the front bumper off. And to do so, it's pretty easy. There's just about three torque screws on the inner arch, a few underneath the bumper, and then about four on top of the grill. Once I've disconnected the electrical connectors, going to the parking sensors on the front, and the washers for the headlight, I can remove the bumper away from the car. Next up, we've got to remove the headlights away from it as well. Once the headlights are out, I can start undoing the front crash bar in hopes to get to that intercooler. Now there's actually a lot of things blocking my way in getting access to that intercooler. One of them being the radiator fans, so I remove them. Then we've got the coolant radiator, then the intercooler, and then an aircon condenser in front of that. So this is the most stupid design ever. We've got the radiator here, which is separated. We've got the intercooler, which we're going to be replacing, and then the aircon condenser at the front. Now, I have removed the fans from the back of the radiator. I, I didn't need to, but it just gave me a little bit more room to sort of deal with this. Now, we would be able to actually remove this full plastic section with the crash bar and everything here if it wasn't for these two aircon pipes here. And these aircon pipes are, have got gas in and I don't fancy releasing that because, well, you're not supposed to. And, well, I can't actually move it anywhere because these sort of wrap around and there's no way of getting them out of it. That is what's holding this on. Unless, unless I'm just being silly, there's another way. But that just is stupid. So I just had to work my way around not being able to get that front panel away from the car because of the aircon condenser. But nevertheless, I undone both intercooler parts which are at the bottom. I could almost pull away the panel completely, keeping the aircon condenser intact, and then pull the intercooler away from it all. So this aircon condenser has made my life hell right now. And no doubt, one of you guys are gonna end up commenting saying, oh, you could have done this to remove it, but... There is literally no way around it from what I can see. But now we've got the old intercooler off and here is the new intercooler. And just to show you the sort of size difference, not necessarily in actual height or width, but actually in girth. We've got a lot more girth with the AirTech intercooler, which means a lot more cooling for that boosted air. And then we've also got some silicon hoses as opposed to the stock hoses, which should provide a nicer and smoother 
Nova Airflow. Next up is just wrestling to fit on the bigger intercooler into that tiny little gap. So just to show you the route of the air, it actually goes into the air filter here, travels down the silicon hose into the cold side of the turbo. It then makes its way down from the cold side of the turbo for the boost pipe here, where it would enter another silicon hose, it'll make its way into the intercooler, which is being cooled by all the air at the front of the car. It will go then out of the intercooler on the left hand side, in through this boost pipe here, and then into the inlet manifold, and then straight into the engine. Hopefully that gathers it up for those who didn't quite understand. So my job now is to put the silicon hoses to the boost pipes, and then I can start by assembling the new intercooler. I actually ended up taking off the aircon condenser because it was doing my head in. And of course, I got the gas released professionally. And in goes the intercooler, and it goes quite nicely in a space which some would call a square space. Which is convenient because it's actually Squarespace who have sponsored today's video. Now, Squarespace do everything from websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics. It really is the all in one platform to build and run your business. Now, Squarespace has made it easy for anyone to be able to create a website. There's so many templates available to start from, and once you've got your template, you can drag and drop your logo in like this. You can edit, delete or add any text you like and also drag and drop your own photos in there. And on the e-commerce side of things is actually really cool. You can even sell digital downloads. It's so easy to list them and price them and what's even better than that, you can see what it would look like on a mobile site as well. So when you need a website, head to squarespace.com or just click the link in the description box below and when you're ready to launch, use code Matt Armstrong and that's going to give you 10% of your first website or domain name. Thanks Squarespace. Now with the intercooler located back into its square space, I can start connecting up the lower hoses to it and begin reassembling the whole front end, including those aircon pipes as well. We've reassembled this front end a fair amount of times now and I almost know it like the back of my hand. So putting it back together was no problem at all. We are in one uprated AirTech intercooler fitted to the S3 and one standard one off, but no aircon. Sorry, Liam. Sorry, I don't worry. <laughs> Next stop is this little part right here. Now this is just an extra little bit before it goes off to the next step, and this is called a turbo elbow. I'm not actually sure how much more power we're gonna get from this, but it's what all the cool kids are doing, so we're gonna have to do it. Now the turbo elbow does what it says on the tin. It's literally a turbo elbow. It connects from the turbo, elbows up into the silicon pipe. The only reason that we're changing this is that apparently the stock turbo elbow is really restrictive. And as you can see here, well, that's evident. The stock turbo elbow almost reduces at the end here, which you'd lose a lot of airflow from. Whereas the new turbo elbow stays consistent throughout the whole elbow. There's only one bolt holding it in and then it just seals up to the turbo. So it's pretty easy to fit. And that is job done, but not job finished. There is one final stage to making power, but we can't do it inside my unit. Hey. And here we are at Mallory Performance to do the final piece of the power puzzle. And that final piece is of course the tuning. Now that we've installed all the hardware to the car, we need the ECU to know that all the hardware is installed on the car, therefore creating more power and hopefully sending the S3 to the moon. Despite all the modifications that we've done to the S3, we've never actually put it on a dyno. So we don't know what power it makes, but today it is 25 degrees, which is quite hot for the UK, which could significantly affect the power in a bad way. Luckily, Mallory Performance have this huge extraction fan at the back, which sucks air all the way through the dyno cell, through these holes in the door at the front, which then goes directly onto that fresh new intercooler we've just installed. Here we go, stock run number one in 25 degrees worth of heat. We're looking for the magic 300 bhp. Here we go. Good. 
154 bhp off the stock run which actually isn't that bad but we have got the intake the exhaust the turbo elbow and everything else so actually it's not too bad but phil i'm absolutely confident now is going to be able to improve this so Phil worked his magic on the Audi S3 to improve the performance and the driving experience as well. We're running 354 bhp at the moment. Let's see what we can get. Here we go. Coming in now, the car is stupidly loud. 399.2, 399 brake. Point two. So almost 50 bhp more than what we were making, 100 bhp more than standard. So this is going to be a completely different car from the off now. So now with the tune, it is a lot noisier. So a successful dyno and tuning session for the S3. We gained another 100 Newton meters of torque as well. And Phil has also added in a gearbox tune for faster shifts. Now on top of that as well, to sort you guys out, if you pop down to Malibu Performance and you want your car remapping, if you use code MAT10, that's gonna give you 10% discount off remapping the car. And on top of that, as a little extra, I'm gonna throw in some merchandise, either a t-shirt, a hat, or a jet tag, whatever you fancy as well. So make sure you guys book in the link Link is in the description box below. Get your car remapped or at least get a quote and I'll see you down here at Malibu Performance. See you guys soon. Let's take the S3 out. Okay, so let's feel what 400 brake feels like and also a gearbox tune as well. Is Liam gonna be happy? <laughs> what has he done? <laughs> I don't know how many people are going to hate in the comments now with that ridiculous pop and bang bit. We've done it, I've asked for it, I wanted to annoy Liam, so here we go. There's so much more power at the bottom. Whoa. <laughs> thing about these cars is the launch and it's only right that we do a little launch control so traction control off move it into sport Okay, that thing is ridiculously quick, but there's another upgrade we need to do. Now with the car being a lot quicker, we're gonna need it to stop quicker, especially with Liam driving. But luckily, I know just the place. Lamborghini. Now I've came here to pick some parts up for the Audi S3, but I'm hoping this works. I went in to go and collect the goods. And look at that smile. This one is going to be special. We secured the goods back to the unit. In this box is the recipe of slowing down a lot quicker. These are, in case you didn't notice, Lamborghini brake calipers. Six pots, so there's six pistons in here, which should help slow down the Audi S3 with 400 bhp. They're the exact same calipers that you find on my Lamborghini Gallardo. But now the tricky part, and I still don't know whether this is gonna work, is fitting these to the S3. Let's give it a go. 
Now for the bigger calipers to work, of course we need brake discs. The same brake discs of an Audi R8 or a Lamborghini. We then have brake caliper carriers here and then also longer braided brake lines. And of course the brake calipers as well. Now you must be mad to think I bought those calipers brand new from Lamborghini. Of course I didn't. I may be mad, but I'm not that mad. I managed to get that full kit off eBay for around £650. I dread to think what they would have been like brand new. All we've got to do is remove the old brake calipers and the old brake discs, and then we can begin on fitting the Lamborghini ones to the S3. I'm hoping that it works. So here are the brake discs. Of course, off a Lamborghini, an R8, and even an RS5, they are multi-directional before anyone says I'm putting them on the wrong way. They have got an arrow, either left or either right. Now, I don't know, to be honest, I struggle to find anyone that's done this on an S3, so I really hope this works. Let's line this up. Doesn't quite sit on the hub very nicely, but that might not be an issue. And once I got the locator screw in, I don't think it was going to be an issue. It seemed to line up no problem. These brake caliper carriers, now these are actually off an Audi RS3, which I think have got similar calipers to the Lamborghini. Now you can't actually order these separately from Audi. If you call up and ask for the part number, they say you have to buy the caliper to get the carrier as well. So the issue is with these, what I've had to do is find them. I think these actually came from Lithuania. I'm just hoping that they actually work with the Lamborghini calipers. And these bolt onto the old wheel hub using the same bolts that the old brake caliper use. And then it's time to line up the caliper. That looks okay. Hmm. What are we thinking of the color? Orange versus purple, that is strong. Oh, I don't know if the wheel's gonna get over this. Well, it's all an experiment, let's see. Let's pop the brake pads in here, and then we'll pop it all on the car. Now a lot of you are probably going to be thinking I'm a scumbag because I've not got brand new brake discs. Truth is, I didn't even know whether this was going to work or not. But the discs aren't that badly worn. And if it all does work, then we can look at buying some brand new ones afterwards. But one thing I did notice when fitting them, the caliper doesn't seem to sit directly in the centre of the disc. But I don't know how much of an issue that's going to be for now. both the brake calipers on, it's time to bleed the brakes. I'm going to unscrew the top of the reservoir as we lost a fair bit when changing over the brake lines. Then I'm going to use my little brake bleeding kit and start bleeding the brakes. There's two nipples on these. You're supposed to bleed first from the nipple furthest away from the master cylinder, but I just find if you keep going over them again and again until all the air's out, I don't find it to be too much of a problem on where you start. But I'm sure some people will say otherwise. Okay, the Lamborghini brakes are on and they look absolutely insane. They pop so well with the orange on the purple. The paint isn't the greatest of things. I think they may need a touch up, but we definitely need to paint the rears orange as well. What I need to do now is just check that we've got a good brake pedal, that the brakes are all bled up and then we can put the wheels on. That's if they still fit and still clear the calipers and then get this thing outside and test them out. Yes, we've got a nice firm pedal. Despite the caliper being slightly off center, it seems like the brakes have bled pretty well. But I think for the long term, we definitely need to machine down the caliper carrier just to move it over slightly that way, just so it's nice and central. Because I don't know whether the brake pads are going to wear unevenly because the pistons in the caliper are going to be pushed further out on this side than that side. So we'll soon see. But let's see if a wheel fits. And the answer is no. Some things just don't go to plan, but the part of the wheel here is actually catching against the caliper, so it looks as if we're gonna have to pull the wheel out that way by using some wheel spacers. So I'm gonna fish around and see if I've got any wheel spacers just for now, just so we can space it out a bit. Maybe a five mil spacer, potentially. Now I found these five mil spacers hanging around the unit, so I give them a go. And unfortunately for me, they still didn't clear the caliper. But I found some 10 mil spaces in the unit. So let's try these out. One 
what a mission I had with these calipers, but they look so good now. They are huge, massively bright orange as well, popping against the purple. I actually ended up putting five mil spacers on to start with, pulled it out of the unit, it caught the calipers, so then they ended up taking it off. I got Chris down here to repaint them, which took ages. We re-stickered them up, and then we put 10 mil spacers on, which now the clearance between the caliper and the wheel is just enough. It is absolutely perfect. There's only one thing we've got to do now. Go and test them out. Now, 400 brake and six pot calipers. Will it stop? Oh, <laughs> oh my God. My, my skin left my face. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Liam. Yes. Are you ready? I'm ready.